Hello everyone and thanks for joining. This is our third webinar series this year and we're excited to have you with us. My name is Jay Siundu. I'm the solutions engineer for the commercial industry. This presentation will have uh, a demonstration of our location analytics solutions. I will take us through the business analyst uh, capabilities. Then my colleague Florin will touch on access insights. We face a lot of challenges as, business, as businesses. All we know, uh, business is a challenging and constantly evolving industry. Every day you are faced with challenges and risks that are likely out of your control from economic uncertainty, such as market volatility, shifting industry priorities, uh, the loss of a major employee. We also face uh, political challenges, such as new regulations that come in with a new uh, government. And competition really is a challenge as well. And all you need to do as a business is to defend and maintain your key customers. You face daunting challenges, and that is finding the right place for the right people at the most opportune time. And this is rather difficult. Since we don't really have full control over these factors, how do we compensate? The answer is location analytics. As the world of data becomes bigger and more integrated with a wider variety, data types and analysis methods, one person can no longer do all the work necessary. You need a team. The levels of work that need to be done within your organization could include data analysts, business analysts, data scientists, or GIS specialists to answer questions asked to inform key decision making. Having a diverse team will allow you to fully integrate the business data that you're working with and how you can integrate with special data. For marketers, it has sometimes been difficult to understand the benefits of location data, especially while trying to get around the technical side of how it works. But now the science behind location data has advanced greatly. This enables marketers by providing quick and reliable results, all by incorporating location data into their marketing strategy. These users are now more accessible and easily combined with existing marketing efforts. Location data can be seen as a branch of big data. When the term big data is used, people generally think first about quantity. While this probably has to do with the reason that the terms exist, big data isn't really about quantity. We think that data is big in the sense that impact is big. We think of location data as big because of its quality in both application and insight. Let us uh, look at the complementary systems that you have in place to a GIS. So uh, maps created within a geographic information system can serve as the most effective framework for organizational integration. On the back end, geographic system information technology links customer relationship management, business intelligence, record management, asset management, and many other systems. On the front end, where workers and Customers consume information from mobile devices, computers, and the Internet of Things. Map, maps provide an intuitive operating picture. Here we have the XGS geospatial platform approach to location analytics. So when it comes to what data as we can work with, we can work with any data format that you currently use from tabular all the way to big data. When you're developing your workflows within this system, you usually follow a specific flow, data preparation, data analysis, visualization, and then sharing of those results. As we can work with all these points in your workflow with multiple different applications. These uh, applications can be utilized to make sure that you're getting the most out of your data. Also, we have big data tools, and these uh, would be tools that your data scientists would use to really make sure that you're getting the best information you can get. As relocation analytics enables more, it enables more than just a map. With Esri location analytics, you realize that uh, this analysis starts and ends with data. And, uh, the world isn't flat, neither is your data. So you will gain insights from your data by simply using the as location analytics. Then uh, you'll also find that your data is really special. Think about the custom regions or administrative boundaries or 
um, even physical addresses that you have within your data. Then with uh, location, every location analytics, you can add authoritative content to augment uh, your analysis. Every location analytics will let you build complete information and analysis for reaching new customers, markets, and levels of success by bringing the power of ArcGIS tools and methodologies to traditional business analytics systems. Organizations create, manage, and analyze vast quantities of data in business systems they, they use every other day. Information about location is pervasive in this data. Customers and constituents have a location. Assets, whether fixed or mobile, have locations as the staff members and suppliers. With the increased use of mobile devices and social media, location data is becoming even more pervasive. By ignoring the location between your business systems, the organization misses the opportunity to make the most informed decisions and create the best business outcomes. Typically, business analysts, marketing directors, operation managers, and other decision makers lack easy access to special tools that visualize and analyze data in a geographic context. Every location analytics provides a transparent connection to GIS that works with the business systems you use every day. Many business users are completely unaware of the value that location analytics can add even if, uh, even if they do use some form of mapping the business systems. The common misconception is that mapping is just adding data as dots on a map, while putting data on a map will help uncover patterns that graphs and charts won't reveal, the value of location analytics can be much greater. Go beyond basic mapping and reach your view of the world, perform map-driven analysis and collaborate with maps. Every location analytics products and the XGS system will help you and the organization apply the four imperatives of location analytics. Why location analytics approach? Our main agenda today is introducing special analysis for all types of analysts, making special analysis more accessible to an organization, increasing the awareness of special dimension as a first class citizen, mapping data without cartography skills to create information products, enable the reach of all users to use GIS without being an expert. We also want to generate demand for a GIS, which is uh, our main uh, goal. Then our main focus on uh, this webinar will be business analyst and uh, ArcGIS insights as uh, location analytics solutions that we have. So we are looking at this strategy that is uh, land and expand, which is based on three simple rules. One is efficient selling, which involves a natural progression. Selling too much too soon can undermine deals. Current customers are best source of income. So let us look at the uh, first location analytics uh, solution. We have ArcGIS Insights, which is an analysis software that fuses location analytics with open data science and business intelligence workflows. It helps you answer questions you didn't know to ask, analyze data completely, and unlock new insights. It empowers analysts of all skill levels across departments to directly connect data perform advanced analytics and take results into third party systems. It enables you explore data and link analysis within an intuitive experience that works the way you do. With ArcGIS Insights, you will revolutionize a decision-making with analysis that visually informs the organization of new, previously unexplored insights gained from the perspective of where. We have um, several deployment options for ArcGIS Insights. Uh, it can be deployed as a software as a service, uh, which will enable you to do cloud-based analytics. You can also install it uh, on the desktop, and it can also be uh, installed on-premise for you to be able to analyze enterprise data offline, of course, with speed. Our second solution is ArcGIS Business Analyst. It helps makes make uh, it helps uh, organization make smarter data driven decisions. We have three different applications. 
the web, Axios Business Analyst for web, Axios Business Analyst for mobile and desktop as well. All this work on premise data and are deployed through online enterprise. When you think of business analysts, uh, we have these components, we have data, map, and analysis. Rooted in science, JS helps businesses gain actionable insight by integrating all types of data. Location analytics blends business data with geographic data to reveal the relationship of location to people, events, transactions, facilities, and assets. And even though most business data contains a location aspect, not many organizations are using location data and spatial analytics in their business intelligence and analytic workflows. People process information faster when it's presented visually. Maps and location create a powerful entry into the world of big data and digital transformation, thus delivering the context that can reveal hidden insights, creating efficiency and increasing productivity and profit. Traditionally, location data has been relegated to mapping and GIS purposes, but geomapping software, like other business software, has become easier to use and business intelligence and analytics software vendors are integrating mapping and special data analysis into their products to provide additional context to visualizations, reports, and analysis. With our business analyst solution, you can analyze trade areas, you can identify new store locations, you can find new customers, you can refine your marketing messages, you can evaluate sites, and by and large, you can reveal untapped markets. So uh, let us see who uses uh, business analysts. So we get a question that, uh, a question that we get a lot is business is, business analysts only applicable to commercial companies. Location intelligence powered by GIS transforms businesses and organizations across a wide range of industries. This range of industries, including government, utilities, nonprofits, and health and human services. Businesses need to work with their clients to understand their customer bases and find locations that can support their projected expansion. For a case of realtors in the real estate uh, segment, they can cultivate strong patterns with retailers, landlords, owners, and brokers across their jurisdiction, helping match businesses to locations where they're likely to thrive, also known as site selection. They can use XGS business analysts to provide interactive data rich insights to its clients through analytic tools built into a web map platform. Axios Business Analyst combines consumer data such as spending habits and demographics with map-based analytics, making it a powerful tool to support site selection and business planning. For a field like utilities, uh, study areas are based on driving and walking times and distances, which can be created using business analysts. Once a routing service utility has been used to publish directions, routing and logistics services based on a network that is set within the ArcGIS server. For the case of uh, banking and finance, banks may use location analysis data to grow their banking network and make better decisions regarding potential acquisitions and continuing, con continuing investments. It also makes easier for banks to contact their customers and offer vital information such as location of the nearest branch or ATM. This aids in consumer engagement as well as the maintenance of a positive connection. Banks can then can even evaluate and segment customers based on their geographic area in order to create more effective marketing and sales effort. Financial institutions and banks can also use location analysis to discover data, to discover and uh, to discover data and effectively retain the most profitable consumers in several regions. Governments have, have not been left behind. They collect and manage vast amounts of data that is all tied to location. Maps and spatial analysis quickly make sense of it. So it's easier to use. They need to understand the demographic trends and analyze impacts to policy to the citizens. They need to understand money and resource allocation as well as looking for site selection for government facilities, making 
uh, data-driven decisions that improve the quality of life, that's essential in central and local governments. So you can see business analyst is not restricted to the commercial organizations. It is, in my opinion, valuable to any organization who uses location data. ESRI applies the sense of where to connect everyone everywhere through a common visual language. It combines mapping and analytics to reveal deeper insights into data. Our applications help our clients better understand their constituents so that they can assess needs and optimally allocate resources such as emergency shelters, health clinics, and much more. It can also help plan for economic growth that fit the needs of their people today and tomorrow. We have just covered the what, the why, and the who. So let us take a deep dive on how these capabilities of business analysts can help us make smart, data-driven decisions. Right, so if you belong to an organization and you have uh, an organizational account and you also have access to the business analyst uh, web application license, you will find it here on the abstract. So when you click on business analyst, it opens in a new tab and you'll use the same credentials to log in, create a new project, then give it a name. So this is an example of a blank project. So I'm going to show us how we can bring in data. You can add data using various form, forms. You can bring in a web map or a web layer. You can import a file. You can also bring uh, in your own data or uh, that will be accessible through the data browser. For our case, we're going to import a file. Yeah, so let me just show us uh, how a file, uh, the file looks like. So this is my file, a CSV file. And we have these uh, column headers. So it has this attributes, agent code, the agent name, uh, physical address, districts, region for number, uh, operational times, uh, weekdays and weekends, of course, the latitude and longitude for the location and services are provided. This data set is uh, for bank agents for a particular bank in. Tanzania. So this is what I'm going to use for our demonstration. Uh, these are existing agents. And uh, what we're going to look at is site selection. So you have mapped your existing agents already, and you want uh, to see who you can onboard as a new agent. Of course, they have applied through a form. You have received this request. And now you, see, you want to uh, look at those points and know if they are really eligible to be uh, your agent. So look at it in the same way that you will uh, do site selection for a new ATM. So factors that we will look at are the, the number of households, the purchasing power of people around that area, and also the population that uh, this Wakala will serve. So let us uh, go ahead and uh, bring in our data into the business analyst environment. So I'll go to where my data is, it's on the desktop, and I'll click on it and bring it into a business analyst. So here we have the NBC colors, click OK, then import. So uh, it's our disappointing locations, then I'll click on next. So I have address or place field. I'll select that from my feature, uh, my data set. I'll pick a physical address. For city, I'll pick uh, region. For region, I'll pick districts. Then uh, postal, I'll select a name. I'll still pick the physical address. And automatically, you see I have the field for latitude and longitude, and they have been picked here as well. So we have an option for reverse your code. Uh, Coordinates, this will allow to reverse your coding of the points to identify their addresses. I'll leave it uh, unchecked, then I'll click next. So you see we have 62 matches found and uh, three invalid addresses. I'll fix this uh, one at a time. So I'll just choose to ignore all of them. I will ignore. And again, right, then I'll just add the matches onto my map. So I've brought in uh, data 
that is uh, a CSV file. Remember, we, uh, we talked about uh, data sets that are supported by ESRI, and uh, we have a wide range from all the way to big data. So I've brought in my, my data, and uh, this is a blank project. So next, I'll just open up a project that I've done already and take us through uh, the various capabilities of uh, ActGIS Business Analyst Online. Let me just zoom in here. So here I have uh, my sites already mapped. And if I, I was going to uh, do a site selection, now I've identified an area. So maybe we have received a request from people around Mara that want to onboard as uh, agents. So I have a site, I'll just uh, select pin, select uh, add the pin here. So you, you have to note that uh, sites, uh, site selection is the uh, first step for you to do, um, for you to create a site, uh, site selection. You create a site under site selection, which is uh, the first step for you uh, to do site selection. So I have selected a site, I'll create a site, then I can do analysis and look at demographics around uh, one uh, kilometer radius, radius, three kilometer radius or five kilometers radius, and I'll click apply. So sites can be created directly from data into Excel or CSV file, as we have seen, or you can, uh, manually define that in the project using a search address right here. But you can also uh, bring in a point the way I have done, or you can also use a geography. We have an icon here. You can bring in a geography. So once you've selected your site, you can uh, create infographics. And uh, at this point, when you click on infographics, you can see that uh, uh, it's being created and you will uh, be able to appreciate the different demographics around that area for the new site that we have created. So we have the total population and you can even explore for more. So when you click on it, you can see we have uh, the percentage of the female population and the percentage of the male population. We also have the average household size, the dependency ratio. We have a population at uh, age 60 and above, population at age 15 to 59, population at age uh, zero to 14, and we have the purchasing power as well. So for this particular infographic, uh, you can share it within your organization, or you can even export it or print. So let me just close that. Then we have reports that you can also generate from a site. So you can select a report that you want to create. Uh, do you want a Tanzania summary report or you want a site map? A site map basically is just a map uh, for that particular site that you have selected. So for that, and that is the, um, yeah, site map shows the map of that particular site. Then we can have uh, the Tanzania summary map as well. So we can export that and this will give us uh, demographics within that area compared to um, Tanzania. So let me go ahead and open the report. It opens on another tab and you can see we have the Tanzania summary map. It, give us, it gives us a population within uh, that area, within one kilometer, three kilometers, and five uh, kilometers as well. And the beauty of it is that uh, it will give you a summary report for all the variables that you have selected. So we have the population, male population, female population, the household total, uh, totals, we have the marital status, education, attainment, uh, unemployment, the rate of unemployment, and the purchasing power as well. So this one will really help you understand the demographic of your potential uh, customer and see if these criteria really qualify this site uh, for you to onboard uh, the agent as um, a new color. So we have uh, done, we have looked at the infographics 
Then you can also run analysis. So this is where exploratory analysis comes in. So you have, uh, you could be having like three or more sites that you want, and maybe you just want one of the three uh, agents that have requested to onboard you as clients. So you'll need to do a suitability analysis. So this will uh, calculate the potential uh, or the market areas of uh, those areas that uh, you're looking at to come up with the most suitable area. Then you can do avoid analysis as well. This is a uh, where you will do a gap for a particular business or market uh, category. So this, uh, you, you will be able to um, deduce the untapped markets and actually identify areas that you could add uh, more sites. Then we have threshold areas. I'll just uh, switch on my threshold areas. I think they're on, let me zoom to that. So threshold areas, you're looking at uh, these areas that uh, meet a particular criteria. So you could, uh, in your planning, you could uh, maybe you want an area or areas that meet, they cover a particular uh, population, maybe 25,000. So if they meet this threshold, then that will actually qualify this site as a, a new site that will on board. So um, you will share results as well when you're done uh, with your analysis. So you can share the results uh, as a PDF or uh, ActJS web map. So this one will be published on your ActJS online. You can also share the results as a dashboard. So you click on a dashboard here, I generated one, and you see that uh, the beauty of um, uh, the beauty of sharing data in business analysis is that you have a, a wide range of uh, products that you could share your data in. So you could have a PDF, you could have a dashboard or a story map. So this is an example of a dashboard. And as I click on the list, you will see it zooms to that area. And uh, my variables here will change as well. So I can uh, change that from uh, one to three kilometers, then you can see the change. And I can also do a side-by-side -side comparison. So when I do a side-by-side -side comparison, it compares the uh, zero to one kilometer buffer of uh, that site, which is uh, Andrew Makunka. It has taken the name of the agent and um, it shows the zero to one kilometer uh, variables, one to three kilometer variable and three to five kilometer variable side by side. Then one thing I need to mention is that uh, whenever you're creating um, a project on business analysts, you will, uh, depending on the area that you're working on, we have data sets for uh, various countries right here. So if you're working within uh, Kenya, you will come select uh, Kenya here. So for my case, I'm working uh, the data set that falls within Tanzania so that uh, I have Tanzania there. Then we have what we call uh, maps. So you can create uh, various maps, you can create color-coded maps. For example, color-coded maps uh, will be created using the various uh, variables of an area. You can choose to have a color-coded map for the total population of that map, the purchasing power, total households, or total population. Then we have what we call uh, smart, a smart map searches, and these are uh, a map that you could choose multiple variables and analyze the best, best areas that match. So let me just uh, show us maps that I have already here. So I have uh, a map that shows, a color-coded map that shows the average household size. I'll just uh, click here and open the map. Yeah, so... Uh, this is a smart uh, map that shows uh, it has total population, it has various variables. So it has a total population, the male population, uh, the female population for Tanzania, and the purchasing power. And all this is based on the census data for the year 2019 and the average household size as well. So this is an example of a smart map. It has uh, various variables in it. So having uh, said that,
flexibility is highly appreciated and uh, we also have a mobile application that can be used uh, by site inspectors. So next I'm going to show us how we can do site selection using a mobile application. So for businesses, flexibility is highly appreciated and we have business analyst uh, mobile phone application which is uh, very, will come in handy for site inspectors. It is also very good for digitizing and taking notes and by and large, no preparation is required. That is the beauty of this uh, mobile uh, application. So the mobile data will be synced to the application projects and what is captured in the field will be accessible on the web. So uh, we are going, I'm going to do a short demonstration of how you can create a site uh, using the mobile application. So you search here on, um, yeah, you just search uh, using the search button, you search for that area. And if you have an, an address, remember we, we could be having uh, physical addresses of our clients or places. So you just input there the um, physical address or such a place. So for my case, I'm going to pick uh, Morogoro uh, Tanga. So it zooms through that area, then I can actually uh, create a site. So let's just zoom in and see. Yeah, so I'm going to create a site and uh, I'll do a three ring buffer. You can also do drive times or uh, also do working times. So uh, maybe we want a site that uh, people can actually walk to and they don't really have to uh, drive to that area. So you can click on the working time and uh, the maximum you can do, uh, can do, you can have two minutes walk, five minutes and a maximum of 10 minutes uh, for this customer is going to look for services in, in our color. In our color, it could be any business. This could be a store, uh, a shopping mall. It could be a liquor store. It could be an ATM, ATM where they're going to withdraw money. So click apply. Okay, uh, we can just select another area. Uh, have an area like uh, Dodoma. Just search for another area. Search for Dodoma to zoom into that area. So let's look for Dodoma Urban District. Yeah, let's zoom to that area. Yeah, we have a site there. So create site. Let's do a working term still. Um, change this to two minutes work, five minutes, and a maximum of 10 minutes work. Then click apply. So you see, uh, we have created a work time and it's buffer. Uh, we have a, a, a two uh, minutes. Buffer, we have uh, five minutes and 10 minutes. So we can just view the details, uh, add notes, say uh, this is ne uh, the new site. So uh, Wakala in uh, Roma, capital D. then we can save that. So we added a, a site. Then you can also generate a report and uh, choose an infographic. So under my infographics, I have the basic facts uh, deck. I can select ESRI infographics and have uh, six basic facts. Then uh, we'll be able to generate an infographic so you will see uh, as well here, we have uh, 
the dependency ratio, we have the total population, we have the purchasing power uh, index, we have the purchasing power per capita, the average household size within that area, and the number of household size and the index as well. Then you can also generate classic reports uh, using the uh, phone. So you can look for the previously run reports if you use the uh, mobile application before, or you can generate a new report. So for our case, let's do a sitemap and uh, see the site uh, of that place. See the sitemap uh, of that place within the uh, two uh, minutes work buffer, the five minutes work and 10 minutes work as well. So it opens uh, a PDF document and you can see we have a sample report there. I'm just going to close that and uh, go back to business analyst. All right, so you have selected your site, you have notes about it, and you have generated a, a site map. So next, uh, you can also have a photo of that uh, place. So under details of the location, you can also take a photo of uh, that site. So I'm just going to do a demo, take a photo of the site. And uh, if you like what you see, then you can go ahead and uh, have that uh, picture of your site. So it has uploaded uh, our photo. You see we have notes there. Then, yeah, so we have uh, facts. We have the location details. So you can see the key global uh, facts. Right there, we have uh, the name of the site, the total population, the total households, average house, household size, the male population, and the female population as well. So, of course, we can also share this. So you can export that and share uh, with people as well. So this is the phone version, and you can share within the uh, given um, media that you have within your um, device. So in conclusion, the ArcGIS Business Analyst web application is for users who want to quickly explore data on maps, create custom boundaries, find sites that meet specific criteria and share information using infographics and reports and business analysts web application that's suitable for non-JS users and tools that are easy to learn and take only moments to complete. Then we have one more thing that I need to show us, then we can uh, finish on business analyst. So we also have another option uh, that you can use business analysts on the web. We have the business analyst widgets. Ideally, it works the same way as the uh, business analyst when you first create a project that will organize uh, your data and maps that you create and reports. So you will create a web application and uh, of course add widgets and include the business analyst widget. So for your site selection, if um, your, your web, you want your web uh, application to do site selection as well, you can uh, bring in a site uh, using, you can add a point, you can add uh, a polygon by drawing on the map, and you can also uh, create a freehand polygon by drawing on the map. So for our case, we'll just select a point and uh, click on our area. Then, uh, yeah, on that side, so we can create uh, rings. I'll just change this from miles to kilometers. So the three ring buffers and click apply. So from this as well, you can uh, be able to 
run infographics and generate reports the way we have seen uh, with the mobile application and the uh, web application as well. So we can do uh, basic facts, uh, dark infographic, run the infographic, and uh, yeah, these are the results. So you will see the various uh, demographic variables that we have within that area that you have selected as a site. So you can see here, we have that. So you can change from one kilometer and see the three, uh, three kilometer buffering, what is there, the variables, the purchasing power, the household's uh, size, the age dependency ratio, and so on and so forth for the same uh, you can do the same for the five kilometers in buffer, and you can also choose to see uh, these side by side. So when you click side by side, you'll be able to compare the one kilometer ring buffer, the three kilometer ring buffer, and the five kilometer ring buffer as well. So you could export that as well. And export it as a PDF, or it could be an image or a dynamic HTML used in your website. So that will uh, mark the end of our demonstration for business analyst. And you'll realize that a business uh, analyst is for users who want to quickly explore the data on maps, create custom uh, boundaries find sites that meet specific data criteria and share information using infographics and reports. It is uh, majorly made, meant for non-GIS users. And the tools are easy to learn and take only few moments complete. So at this point, I'd like to invite my colleague, uh, Florine, to take us through ArcGIS Insights. Now that you have selected your site, you want to see the way your store is performing. Take it away, Florine. Uh, thank you so uh, much, Joyce. Uh, just allow me to share my screen. Thank you. So mm -hmm. thank you for that so really extensive demonstration of how you can actually uh, use a business analyst to perform a powerful uh, analysis. We have seen the flexibility of business analyst from the phone to actually embedding it within a geo application. And uh, what have you? So thank you so much. Now we want to see you already. You have already performed site selection, you've performed void analysis, or you performed threshold analysis for your data set. We've seen how you can do geo enrichment within business analyst. So we want to see how we can, assuming we already have data in our, you know, that relates to the kind of business that you're performing. Maybe we're doing a retail business and we have a repository that stores all the information of our customers. Maybe we want to see um, the performance performance of our business in terms of departments, you want to look at how our products are affecting our markets. We just want to see the market dynamics of whatever we are engaging in uh, within our business. So ArcGIS Insights is one of the most, uh, of one of the very few um, powerful analytic software that fuses both location analytics with open data science and business intelligence workflows. So we, we want to get to answer questions that are found within our data set that we didn't even know. So we are going to see how we are going, we can actually do that. This is an example of an ArcGIS Insights workbook. Some of the info, uh, some of the visualizations that can actually come up within your data set. We're going to see the simple drag and drop workflow or operation that's Found within ArcGIS Insights and how you can you can actually apply that to your to, to your business data. So I'll start with uh, my data set. So uh, before first I get into my data set, let me just show you how the the you know the interface of ArcGIS Insights looks like. This is how it looks like. The homepage looks like this. You have the different workbooks you you um you you have created before. Um, if I want to create a new workbook, I just go to workbooks and create a new uh, workbook form. For, for for my for my work you have um you can you will see how now we can actually add our data set so just give it a moment while my new workbook is is, is being created yes so 
one of the very many powerful capabilities of insights is you can actually bring in multiple uh, sources of data. So you may have your data hosted within just online as a relation, you know, within a relational uh, database. You can have it um, uh, in a different uh, geo database, uh, sorry, in a different database, like an Oracle database or um, a post just data, depending on what where you have your data hosted, you can actually do a connection to that database and connect, uh, add your data set within uh, access insights. So if you have you, apart from that, you can actually upload um, your data set, if, if you have it the, as a spreadsheet, if you have it as a shape file, have it lo uh, locally hosted somewhere within your machine, you can actually browse on that and, and, and select that uh, data set. So I'll just uh, give an example of how you can uh, load data set that is already hosted locally hosted within your machine. So I have some a spreadsheet here that uh, shows the commercial permits within a given area. You just click on that and add. Uh, so this is not the data set that I'm going to use for my demonstration, but this is just an example of how you can bring in data set that is locally hosted within your machine. And this is also a very good way to demonstrate how, uh, as you can see, when I brought it this, when I brought in this data that was uh, that is a, a spreadsheet, when I break down and look at the different fields that I have within my data set, I'll call this an unspatial table because I do not have a field that actually represents the location um, of this of this data set. We're going to see the difference of how what happens when you bring in a spatial table or an unspatial table and how it comes in. So for an unspatial table, we do not have any default um, card that is well that will be shown or that will be brought in with, uh, within our workbook. So what we need to do, if you want a map or you want to create a, a card that shows the map uh, of, of how whatever you, you, I mean, of how your data set is distributed uh, within your map, you need to enable location. So I click on the three dots ne right next to my um, spreadsheet and then I click on enable location. So think of it, if you've used a uh, GIS Pro or ArcMap or whatever, and you're bringing a table to uh, that environment, you always use the display X and Y option. So this is almost similar to that, where uh, you're, you're going to pick the field that contains your 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 X uh, attributes, the fields that contain your Y attributes, and um, configure or give the right spatial reference for your data set, and just click on Run. So once uh, that is complete, you'll see that we now have a, a field or we now have an attribute that shows the coordinates or the locations of, of all of the of your data set or whatever you're trying to represent. So once I do that uh, and I drag it uh, to the map or to my workbook and choose the map card, I'll see that um, a map will be created just showing the different or just showing how my data set is distributed. Great. So that, that was one part of the demonstration. So I'm not going to do the, to use this for my I'm not going to use this for my demonstration, but I'm going to use some uh, data sets, some retail uh, data sets of uh, how some retail data sets that is showing uh, the distribution of customers uh, for uh, an online uh, liquor store that has been distributing uh, their products all over Nairobi. So it has a report, or there's a repository showing uh, all these customers that are purchased before for this, uh, for this business. So we just want to answer or ask different uh, questions within our data sets. We want to see what are the mode of payments that are being used by our customers? Uh, what, what is the brand that uh, our customers prefer or what, at, what brands attract at the different customers that we have? We also have a field showing now the total price. This can be used to just show um, uh, the sales that we've done within a given period. And then we have some fields giving the location of our customers and a very interesting uh, field that just shows uh, the segmentation profiles of our customers. So depending on where they're coming from, what is the segmentation or where does this area fall? Is it a lower middle estate? Is it, an, is it found within an affluent estate? Is it uh, classified as um, generation X, urban and what have you? So we just want to be able to match our customers or to match our, our, cust our, our customers with their segmentation profiles and you know see what is that, what product is attractive to them so i am using a data set that i have already hosted within um access online so i'll just click on i'll just click on uh, add data sets and then my my data set is found within my online portal i go to 
maybe sort it so that I can easily find it. There is my data set and then uh, click on add. Yes. So one thing I should also mention is ArcGIS Insight, just like a business analyst, is also a licensed uh, product. So for you to be able to use it, you need to actually have a license for uh, this specific uh, product. So yeah, uh, as you can see, because my data was a feature layer, it was already spatial. It was a spatial table. So the default card that came in was... Um, the default card that came in is actually a map that is showing the different distribution of my data set. If you see, if I uh, just expand the fields found within my data set, you can see I have a location field and that's why I had the default card being a map and I have all these other fields uh, down here. So this, um, uh, within this map, I can see that uh, my map just shows a dense, uh, I mean, a dense distribution of all my customers, but I can't actually draw an interesting pattern or come up with a pattern that I can actually give um, come or see where most of my customers are concentrated or where, most, where do I have most of my customers. So I'll just change that and use a heat map to show uh, how my customers are distributed. So from this, I can easily deduce that most of my customers are found uh, within this section. So this is uh, the section, I think, around uh, Thicker Road. So most of my customers clearly come from this section. And if I am to start up or I, if I am to come up with a, with a physical store, I will definitely... Um, choose to bring my store very close to where I have most of my customers compared to the rest of the areas. So I can see the concentration of my customers. I can see the outliers within my data sets. Where do I have few customers? Maybe where do I have to, you know, increase my marketing strategy or where do I have to increase my market, marketing activities to draw more customers? Yeah, so that's just one example. A map, you can bring in a map at whatever points. Uh, apart from that, you can actually draw relationship within our data set, the relationship between our different uh, attributes within our data set. Again, depending on the type of uh, data or the type of field that you're working on, you'll have different visualization, you'll have different charts. So for example, if I work with a mode of payment, this is what was showing the kind of or the type of pay payments that my customers prefer. So this is an example of a qualitative um, data set or a categorical data set. When I drag it and I use charts, the default chart for this uh, is always a uh, a bar chart, as you can see. So depending on your data set, you'll have different types of visualization. You'll have different types of default cards or default visualizations that will show, but you, you're at liberty to actually change that. So maybe I want to, for this, I want to use a bubble chart that shows, um, that clearly shows that most of my customers actually prefer M-Pesa. And when I click on M-Pesa, you can see where most of these customers have been using M-Pesa. If you look at your, you can see the interactivity between my card uh, giving the bubble chart to the mode of payment and my card that actually shows the map of where my customers are. When I click on credit card, I can see that most of my customers, in, compared to M-Pesa, where most of my customers who preferred M-Pesa were found in, in this area around Thicker Road as well. When I click on credit card, I'll see that that has shifted and most of my customers who prefer using credit card is in this section. So if I'm to come up with a store at this section, I will ensure that I have the option for my customers to actually use credit card to make uh, their payment. So apart from that, you can see that we have the the, the the date field you can see that we have the date field that has been broken down to the different uh, sections we can we have yearly we have monthly we have day of the week and we can actually perform analysis for each one of these so maybe i want to come up with um i want to bring in the date field i want to see when did i have a uh, high sales when did i have high did i have high pixels so i'll just go with the default chart and um again the default chart sorry uh, i used the wrong the wrong field so let me do that again order dates bring in do the the chart and as you can see that my default chart was actually a time series because i was working with data set that was uh, with data set that is um you know a time field so i can clearly see that i had very high sales or i had very high many customers visiting my store for the period between our fourth our fourth uh, December to 11th uh, December. Very important. I can see where I had my low sales. When were my peak seasons and when were my when were my low seasons? Maybe I can make this more interesting and draw the relationship between two different. Um, draw the relationship between two uh, different fields. For example, I want to see if I compare segmentation and the order dates. 
I'll be able to see in terms of uh, the dates or the times when my customers uh, visited my store with segmentation, uh, which segmentation I uh, did that on, you know, and on, on what date. So when did I have peak sales in the middle, in the, in the lower middle estates? When did I have peak sales in the affluent estates? And what have you? So with this, I can also clearly see that most of my sales or most of my customers actually come from the middle the middle, uh, the lower middle estate, as you can clearly see, that's the line chart that's above it. Um, so with this, I can I can decide. Oh wait, I do not have very very. I, could, I do not see very high sales from the affluent estates. So I can decide to focus my campaign uh, strategy or my marketing strategy uh, only, or I can focus them in the affluent estates for me to increase the number of customers uh, making orders for my store. Um, Another very interesting thing we can do with this, I can maybe um, decide to come up. Uh, so you can actually, apart, apart from exploratory analysis, maybe I can come up, I can come to the chart that I've already done, that I've already finished um, from exploratory analysis. So for example, I have, so for this, I've already created, um, I already created uh, different things. I came up with, apart from the map, apart from the bubble chart, I came up with, uh, also uh, another card showing uh, at uh, a box plot of where, when did I have, in the days of the week, when did I have high sales in the different segmentation? So I can clearly see that um, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, I have very high sales in the lower middle estate compared to these other uh, segmentations where the sales or when I had very high sales are very different. So I'll be sure or I'll use this information to make sure that on all these days, maybe you realize that you have very, very high number of orders on Fridays. So I'll make sure that on Fridays, my stock is in check. I will not uh, run out of stock for these uh, different uh, segmentations, depending on when uh, or the day of the week that I have high sales. So let's see how we can actually come up with a link chart. So apart from exploratory analysis, you can actually perform different uh, types of analysis from temporal analysis to um, spatial analysis. So maybe I want to see how, how me, uh, my the different data set or the different fields that I have is related. So when you click on that, you can see you have different kind of visualization. I can decide to come up with a link chart. So with a link chart, I can choose the fields that I want to see. I want to see um, what with my segmentation, which customers prefer um, or, or which segmentation prefer what kind of brands that I offer or what kind of products just to ensure that I have the right product mix for my customers depending on their profiles. So I'll click on segmentation and brand, that's okay. And then I'll click on run. So you'll see what we can uh, actually come up with. So maybe I should put this down. Right, so we have a very nice uh, link chart showing so maybe I can just expand that and bring it somewhere there for you guys to see. Yes, so I have a nice link chart that shows when I click, for example, on the lower middle estates, I'll see that uh, they mostly prefer, these are the brands that they mostly prefer. They use Grants, they use Gordons, they use Gilby's, a span of vodka and what have you, which, which could be very different from uh, affluent estate. The kind of brands that they prefer is actually very, very different. So I will just know what do my customers prefer and make sure that I provide the right product mix for my customer. So the goal or the end goal of all this visualization is to just better understand my customers. And for that, I'll be able to create better targeted uh, campaigns. So apart from uh, some of the, I mean, apart from the exploratory, um, analysis and the the temporal analysis we can actually perform a uh, proximity analysis what is nearby you can perform you can see how your data is distributed and the kind of analysis offered for different for cards for the different cards are very different as you can see that was one for the bubble chart when i click on my map and do um and, and check the different analytics that i have most of my analytics are actually spatial analysis i can come up with buffer times or drive times like what joyce was showing us using business analytics apart from that i can actually enrich my data uh with the same thing that joyce was showing us, I can bring in population data sets, uh, maybe um, 
the purchasing power of my customers and what have you. I can even perform spatial integration where I'm bringing in a data set that shows the, that has been, or maybe I'm bringing in a shape file that shows the different constituencies, uh, for example. And with that, when I bring into my map or when I do spatial integration, my data set will actually be, be um, divided or be actually be classified according to the the administrative boundaries that are brought in. You can perform a uh, density ratio, you can perform spatial filters and what uh, a view. So we have seen how we can draw powerful insights within um, our data sets. So apart from that, now once you have uh, done, you, you have performed the different insights, you have come up with a nice visualization for your data set. We have seen how interactive these cards can be. Um, when you click on one data set, sorry, uh, my, yes. When you click on, on one attribute within your data set, you can, that actually affects the rest of the cards that you, you've created. You've seen the different kind of visualization cards that you can come up with. An example is a very nice data clock like this that just shows you when, where, um, when you look at the middle estate, I have very high, most of them prefer grants or Jamison's and what have you, which could be very different from affluent estates and, and all that. So we've seen uh, the different, or we've seen how the, our data can actually answer the different questions. So I can actually uh, share my workbook. Uh, maybe if I had one open. Um, so I can share my workbook uh, as to the different levels, be it my organization, be it the public, maybe this is very sensitive information that I do not want anyone to see. I can just click on the share button from the homepage and click if I want to have it viewed by everyone, if I want to just have it viewed by members of my organization, or if I want it to be viewed by the different departments found within my organization, or also if I just want it to, to be viewed by myself or to be accessed by myself. Apart from that, you can actually um, share uh, individual cards or individual visualization. You just click on the three dots and click on export or share. You can copy it and put it into your presentation and incorporate it within your presentation. And um, you know what's uh, a view. So we can we have seen how we can perform. Uh, you know, in a matter of minutes, we can come up with different or we, we can we can come up we can build a workbook that shows that answers different questions within um, our data set we've also seen that we are not we're not only able to answer some basic questions we have within our data set but you can also be able to discover uh, new questions like from my data set maybe i want to see um I want to evaluate the efficiency or the efficacy of our campaigns. Maybe I had a field that shows the different campaigns that I've done, marketing campaigns that I've done, and how it affected the different uh, different people or different customers. I can actually perform analysis on, on for that and see this campaign, who did it affect? This mode of camp or when I use this mode of campaign, maybe if I use uh, social media or if I use TV, how many people does it reach to or how many people respond to this mode of campaign? you know, compared to this other mode of campaign. And with that, now you can just be able to strategize your business and come up with the most effective um, marketing strategies for the different uh, demographics or for, the, for your different um, customers, depending on, the, on your marketing uh, dynamics. So apart from that, we can, we've seen how we can share our insights and seen how we not only, uh, this is not only a, a system of discovery, but a system of shareable, of shareable and repeatable discovery. So if this data set comes in, or if next year I have another kind of, of data set, I can actually just bring it in and uh, come up with a different other visualization. We can even perform, uh, we can even perform filters for the different, for, 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 for the different attributes. Maybe I just want to see, um, you want to analyze data for only affluent estates or for only specific areas. I can actually do that. And when I click on a like that will actually affect all the kind of visualization and all the cards that are created for my um, data set. So this is just an, a, a, a glimpse of what you can do with uh, ArcGIS Insights from your different kind of data set. Don't limit yourself from to retail. The, the different cards that are created for government, to insurance, to bank, uh, to banking services, and and what have you. So just I uh, please use ArcGIS Insights to call, to draw meaningful and powerful insights from your data set. Answer questions that you didn't know you even have within your data data set. And this will now ultimately, um, you know, uh, better will make you better understand your customers and ultimately increase your profitability as a business. Yes, thank you so much for your time. 
uh, I think uh, this has been all. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to you know reach out to us and someone will uh, get to you. Thank you and enjoy. Great.